This is Facebook Live by Finavar and Mix, um, called Mix Media Minutes. And I'm here with Primo Marketing and we are going to create Altered Tin Shadow Box based on my products, uh, which are created for Primo Marketing. Let me show you the project again. This is the, the plan for today. We've got a little tin, which is going to be filled with a little bit of art. And I hope you like the color palette. This is all about moon and stars. This is because I was inspired by our latest uh, mood board for February, which was uh, done for Art Daily Cafe, which is our journaling project. So that was Indigo and all about daydreaming and night dreaming. There's a new mood board starting today with the beautiful emerald colors and everything that is uh, rediscovering and looking with the fresh eyes at everything. So check it out. Just to start first, there was always a lot of questions about the molds and what to use in the molds. There are so many options and I was trying to explain many times you can use almost everything you like. So there are uh, options of different kind of soft paste or paper clay or different kind of material which you can just make softer in your uh, hands and push it into the mold. Or you can try to uh, experiment with hot glue or people prefer resin. This is the mold I was using to create my moon that I was using for the sample for the uh, Facebook Live. So this is exactly the biggest moon that comes from here right so this time i was using uh resin and this is really quick resin so i will just show you how it is done so you have more confidence and i think i'm going to make just video on what you can put in the molds but just to make it's very clear, these ones are very great quality. They are great silicone, so it's very hard to kill them. So you can even use hot glue gun to pour directly inside. So these are two components of resin and there are equal amounts of them. So I just need to mix them together. And it's important to wear gloves, which I'm not doing. And Kasia probably has heart attack because she knows it's very dangerous. So let, let me show you. I'm putting the gloves, right? <laughs> putting the gloves on, okay? Some people are uh, very sensitive and they may react badly to the resin, right? So don't forget about the gloves. Then you just stir it a little bit, okay? Don't stir too much and don't pour too much of this kind of resin in the container because it's going to get hot and hard too quickly. And then you just pour it carefully in your mold. You can help with a bit of the spoon or a little stick, right? You just feel it just like um, pouring chocolate, for example, just carefully. And then you let it get solid. It takes from um, 15 minutes to maybe a few hours, depending on the kind of resin you've got. This one dries really quickly. I think it's pretty st straightforward, right? This is some kind of resin I buy in a big containers and maybe I can find the container for you. Okay, so you can see I'm just trying to use everything so there will be no waste and the containers i just bought them on uh, amazon i know you can find them locally probably the brands will be different depending on the country right and they are amazing materials uh done by different brands prima's got great uh, it's called molding material it's soft and white and uh, it's flexible. Okay, so this was this kind of polycraft. That's called polycraft, right? Two big ingredients. You can see I really go with the big containers. And uh, you, can, you can just pick whatever is convenient for you. Some people prefer 
pouring like this. Some people prefer just pushing with your fingers. The problem is here, this is not flexible at all. So if you'd like to go on the round objects, uh, this Prima molding material is just perfect because it is going to stay flexible for some time. So you can uh, bend it and glue it and then it's going to go on the round objects like bottles or for example, jars or anything else, even on the furniture. This was in fact done for furniture. I'm not very careful, but I have to take it away. You can see I have to now wait, right? And then once it is done, this is turning a little bit lighter and you can see this is just easy to pop everything out, right? So these are a little bit slippery, so you have to uh, use some gesso before adding anything on the top, but I don't think this is a problem. But they are really great if you need to create a lot of elements at one time. So pouring mediums are the solutions or any kind of uh, molding materials. It's up to you. This is just an example. And of course, molds are food approved, so you can easily <laughs> put um, uh, the sugar fondant for the cakes into that and make elements for your cake decoration, or you can pour chocolate. And one of you, and you were showing this uh, project on um, the group in Finnaver and Friends Open Studio, you made some white and blue chocolate, and it was the, uh, this was exactly the small use for that. So it almost looks like white chocolate here, right? So it's very, very delicious. So that is how I made my moon. Of course, there will be some imperfections, but you can break them or cut them later. So it's very simple. It's just a little bit of patience, right? So just to show you the progress in the meantime, this already started to get solid, right? You can see it's changing the color. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, we are going to use it as a focal point in the, uh, in the tin. Uh, of course, the element choices, uh, they all depend on the size of the tin. Uh, my tin was quite big. It's like about 10 centimeters or maybe 12 centimeters big. And uh, I already painted the outside of the same tin. This is one that I use for uh, some kind of extra vitamins. And in the meantime, of course, I also made a top, right? So there is a very similar set of techniques on the top and inside. I will just let you know what are the differences later so you can easily make the top of the lid of your uh, box or your tin as well using a very similar set of techniques. So, do you know, it's just, it's just a bunch of ideas. Well, first of all, we need to make some interesting background. So my idea was to use some fabric. In fact, I have some cheesecloth and I'm going to use it to create the background. But what is very important, I would like to make my life easier. So I'm just going to paint it first inside so I don't have to struggle that much with getting through. And I'm just using my black gesso heavy gesso in black color. So it's very covering, very creamy. It's great quality and usually one coat is enough. And we don't have to be perfect here because there will be a lot of things going on on the top. So just make sure your gesso is dry before you're going to try to stick something in, okay? I use the same gesso to paint the thin on the outside and uh, I painted two coats just in case and I dried it with a heat gun. Most of the mediums they really react well with the heat gun so you don't have to wait too long. I keep the gesso because it may be useful in a moment and I just need to dry it now. Now we've got more or less black background. It doesn't have to be completely black because we are going to add a lot of things on the top. So we have to create a cool looking dimensional background under our moon. I hope you can see it here, okay? So first I'm going to use some of the cheesecloth and I'm going to cut a piece of it and try to stick it inside. Of course there are many layers, so you don't have that, you don't really have to use that much. I'm trying to just put it 
here. Yes, black gesso. I made a video about the gesso choices. Where, when would you really like to use black gesso? When is the best idea to use clear gesso? Black gesso works really great with the metallic finishes. Here is a lot of metallic. So we are going to um, start with black. And of course, this is all about um, dreams and night and moon. So that background is kind of a natural choice and you can make it really shiny on the top of the black, but there will be still a little bit of this very cool shadow. Now we need to glue it in. Just whatever you've got. For example, 3D gloss gel may be a great solution to make sure it's going to stick. <laughs> I'm not very careful, and you don't have to be that careful, to be honest, okay? Because it's all going to be painted anyway. I'm just trying to make sure this is going to stay in. The set of techniques I'm showing you, they're really fun and they're absolutely great if you are a beginner, because you may see they are <laughs> so easy to repeat and you can use this idea on so many different things. You can use it for altering, but you can also try um, the same thing in your journal or on your collage, right? It looks a little bit like a little nest now. <laughs> okay, so this is just ready to add something on the top. We can measure how much space our um, moon is going to go take, right? So it's quite big. So we don't really have that much space for the composition. And I really wanted to save space for my special sparkly pebbles. So as you can see, I really limited the embellishments here. You don't really have that much. So I'm going to do the same now. I've got some bigger cogs from my mechanicals, some medium and some smaller ones. Some of these, they will fill the space just enough. So I will probably put this one here. You can see I use similar one. That should be good under the moon. And I will try to give it some balance on the opposite side with the smaller one. So I will just use the same 3D gloss gel. And of course you don't have to do it with your finger, you know, you can use tools. You can just easily glue it on the top of your cheesecloth, right? And this one is for the balance. So I'm repeating the same step. You can use heavy body gel. You can use modeling paste, whatever you have on hand, everything will be painted anyway. So you don't have to worry that much. Okay. Now, if you have these ugly blobs and you are thinking like, oh my God, no, I can't stand it. You can always take a bit of water on the brush and try to clean it off. But remember what I said, it's going to be all covered in paint. So you don't have to focus too much on that, okay? So now measuring again, mm, maybe a little bit more. I will push it a little bit more here. Perfect. I would like to add something for balancing. Maybe this little piece will be nice. It's good to have uneven numbers visible. So let's say this will go here. This is one of the new mechanicals as well. So we have the main composition more or less ready. I'm not gluing the, uh, the moon yet because I want it to be a little bit more above everything. Okay, the three big elements. Now, because this is the starry night, we can try to fit some of the stars. Okay, uh, stars are coming in different sizes. You can make them in the mold. Just to show you, see there are some stars which are not too big, not too small, medium sizes. Uh, some of these, let's try, these may fit into our composition as well, right? Or you can take the uh, one of the um, metallic molds. These are the ones that come from my set of mechanicals. 
different sizes, so I'm going to use these. They're ready to go. Beautiful metallic colors. And again, I'm trying to put uneven numbers of uneven number of stars. I think you can see them. One, two, three <laughs> in here. And I have to save the space for the pebbles. Okay. So let's take this one. Thinking, where is the space I've got? Maybe here. Right? Then hmm. Smaller. Tiny bit smaller, maybe here, and one more here. If I will have more space after adding the pebbles, I can always add more of my stars. Okay, it is happening. It's happening. Now, the pebbles. Pebbles are great to add the dimensional effects, but I wanted to make them really special. They're glittery pebbles now. So, I've got my glitters on the table and they are going to be uh, one of the elements that is going to be the finish. But also, I wanted to make my pebbles really special with the text and glitter. You can see, make art. They're really dimensional. They work like magnifying glasses. So what I did, I took uh, my sentiment set. I was trying to find the words that would make sense and they would fit under the pebbles that I'm able to fit in my um, in my composition. So I was looking for words which are not too big, not too long. And this way I found make, <laughs> and it even fits into the smaller one. And what can you make? Make art. And here's the word art. So I've got uh, pebbles in two sizes and I'm just going to show you how I made my glittery pebbles. It's very fun and quite simple, right? This is exactly what we need, more pebbles. First of all, it's a good idea to stick the stickers on some paper because when I was trying just directly from... <laughs> um, from the sticker, it was sticking to my fingers and it was not really what I wanted. So I take my two words. I have a piece of paper here and I'm going to stick both of them and cut them a little bit smaller so they are going to fit. They are ready. One is going to go under this one and one is going to go under this one. Now I need to stick it to the back of the pebbles. The best solution is something easy to apply. You can use your transparent glue. I will use soft gloss gel, which is very sticky and very easy to apply with the brush. It's a um, liquid gel medium with the transparent glossy finish. And it's, as you can see, very strong glue. So I'll take a smaller brush and I will put a portion <laughs> of the soft gel on the back of the pebble and I will stick the word. For now it is very blurry but it's going to go transparent. I'm trying not to touch it too much. Now I repeat with the other one. Mm -hmm. Trying not to stick myself to the pebble. Okay. And now for the glittery finish, before anything else, <laughs> I take the glitters and here I started already. I just mix my favorite colors to create lovely glittery mix. I take some of the black and blue shades. It's one of my favorite, favorite shades of black. Mm -hmm. Now, <laughs> carefully, without sneezing, you can try to mix your glitters and then you put your pebble in the glitter to stick it on the back. See? 
it's going to be really lovely when it's finished. And then, of course, you repeat with the second one. And for good measure, you can create some of the other pebbles as well. So they're going to be extra accents for your composition. You can see I've got one here, it's really small, one here, one here. So I'm just going to make two or three more of the pebbles the same way, but this time without any text on the back, right? I will let them sit and then I will dry them with the heat gun. Because we are not going to stick them yet, I just put them on the side for drying and then we can start adding color to our tin, okay? First layer of color has to be something to cover the colors we've got so far. Okay, so I will repeat the step with gesso. You don't have to stick the moon. You can paint it separately and then add it when you are ready. So I just take the same gesso and I'm going to paint the moon and I'm going to dry it a little bit and paint it inside again. Okay, so now I'm coming back to my black gesso and I will try to make sure that everything inside is black, trying to not to move elements too much. Of course, it's better to long, wait longer, but I'm just dabbing on the top. So this is going to dry and I will do the same with the moon. We've got the inside of the tin ready. Now, the colors. There's, a gl there's glitter, of course. There are the pebbles. They're going to come later. There is this silver color, which has to be the highlight, but we need to work on the uh, general color of the blue palette first. And the easiest way is to use some sprays, or if you've got, you can use the waxes. I am going to use the uh, metallic acrylic paints. And the main color I really love for this kind of project is royal blue. This is metallic royal blue. You can also look at the midnight sky, which is a little bit darker. And I am going to combine it with maybe a little bit of the rich turquoise just to break that. Okay, so we've got two shades of blue. And I'm also going to use my sprayer to help them go everywhere I want them to go. So I'll just take a smaller brush and you don't have to use a lot of paint. It's more like dabbing in different places and then the water is going to make it flow. You can see how easy it is, right? You don't have to plan, just let the paint do the job. <laughs> yep. I will try to go a little bit on the outside as well because this is where the moon is going to go. But it's just it. I didn't spend too much time doing it, as you can see. Perfect. Now, the next step, of course, we dry it. Okay, so you can see we are getting closer to the effect we wanted to get. Now, we are going to work on the highlights. Highlights are important, so <laughs> it's good to have something that is going to be this standing out color. My moon is very black, but I was planning to use waxes. What is a great choice because they've got um, this beautiful shine. This is metallic silver wax. This is um, one of the colors I used on the moon. This is the uh, my plan. I will add a tiny bit of white gold as well. These are the best... Uh, the best colors to create the moonlight effect, I think. And I will try to just put them uh, on the moon. You can do it with your fingers. So I'm just going to blend these two. You can see how easy it is. Amazing transformation, right? <laughs> and it just took us like um, 40 seconds. So now when you're we're going to put it in, it's going to be very visible. But before, We've got the leftovers on our fingers, so we can highlight the most interesting parts of the composition. I'm trying to touch the tops of the stars, as you can see, and the tops of the cogs. I know there's no, usually there are no cogs on the sky, but you can imagine these are planets, and this is generally steampunk art box, right? So everything that is about cogs is going to be fine. 
Can you see how quickly it is done? <laughs> so that is, I'm just using the leftovers of the wax I used for the moon. You can see very quickly, you can transform your project look, right? You can see the result I wanted to get, getting there. Okay, now, because we are uh, planning to add a bit more elements, I think it's good time to put the uh, moon in. And I wanted it to be a little bit above the composition, so I need to put it on something. You can use a piece of cardboard, or you can, if you have the 3D foams, they're a perfect solution. I've got uh, 3D foams, and I even have them in black color. These are from Scrapbook Adhesives, and they're going to help me make the moon a little bit more dimensional. So it's going to be more interesting for us to look at, not so flat inside of the tin. I'm just trying to cut it to fit as much as possible. What I love about um, this kind of foam, I tested that many times and it doesn't melt. Doesn't melt at all. So you can use the heat gun over it and it's still going to stay in place. So let me put the moon into the right position. It's very strong adhesive as well. So you can see I'm not even putting any extra gel. How cool is this, huh? <laughs> so you can see we're not far, but we need to add the bling and we need to add the elements. So uh, it's just a little bit unfinished. First of all, uh, let's place our pebbles. We've got them ready and they should be dry by now. The most important pebbles are the ones with the text. They're the biggest ones, right? These two. So we need to find the space. Art and make. Well, for example, like here. It's just very, very good place because it's going to be nicely visible and it's not going to cover too much of our cog as well. So we need to find good adhesive and let's say the same 3D gloss gel, the same 3D gloss gel is going to be good solution. I put quite generous amount on the back. If you have your heavy body gel, that's perfect solution. Today I am using the 3D gloss because um, it was on the table and it's not really heavy duty gluing. Okay. Perfect. Just making sure I have it everywhere. Now I'll try to fit my other pebbles. Perfect. You can see how nice they are and they're adding this lovely shiny dimension, right? And you can play with a lot of effects like that. This is just an idea. You don't have to stop yourself. If you have space, you can fit a lot of these. I'll try to stick this one as well. And this one may be here, close to the stars. That's the problem when you stick with, stick with the gel, it's on your fingers and everything would like to stick to you instead of the project. But if you are careful, there should be no problem. This is the result I wanted to get. Now I will try to clean off the excess. You don't have to be too careful because we are going to sprinkle glitter in a moment. <laughs> Other idea, what else you can add is maybe, maybe, that all depends what you've got at home. Maybe you've got some beads or micro beads. I've got black micro beads. Of course, this is just <laughs> absolutely perfect add-on. They look like poppy seeds, so they may be great for adding some dimension. You can think about more glitters, of course. You can think about adding some uh, sakins. I hope this is the way you are calling that in English. Sakins? <laughs> I know they are huge, but they are adding a beautiful effect. I think this is a, one of the first things I bought when I started doing crafts. So it is like 2007, 2008. They are very, very old, but you don't really use that much of this kind of 
uh, element in your project. So I still have the, almost the full box. <sighs> so it's not like I really wanted to get rid of them, but you know, I, when I can, I will use them. So here again, the same problem. We have to be quite careful about the application. So I try to put a bit and maybe slide one here. Again, trying to make composition in the way that they will be somewhere in interesting places, catching the light, right? Okay, now some beads and some glitter, right? I'm not drying it out because basically it has to be sticky to put the things in. So I'm just going back to my soft gel and I can't show you completely because it's going to go out. So I take the same brush and now I will try to add a bit of these beads maybe closer to the moon. Maybe I will overlap the pebbles a little bit as well. It's really up to you. I will try to put it into the cavities behind as well. I'm sorry. So the microbeads. We are just adding such lovely detail. It's like the shadow behind the moon's face. Yeah? Akasha, that's a great idea. You can use anything, anything that has the potential. What I really like about recycling is you just look at the things with completely different eye. And you can just find amazing treasures just in your kitchen. Okay, just trying to show you what I wanted to get. And now finally, tiny final touches of glitter. But we have quite a lot of glitter already, so I don't want add too much. So it's just like a bit of here and there. And I will pick similar colors I used for the pebbles. So a bit of cobalt blue and a bit of black blue. It's just a magical sparkle. Of course, I have to clean off from the pebbles, but generally, you know what I mean. Right now, I have to tap off the excess. I've got a rubbish bin nearby, so can you see how shiny it is? Okay, so now I'm cleaning off <laughs> from the moon's nose and cleaning off from the pebbles before it's too late. I want it to be very nicely visible. Mm -hmm. You can see how the color of the uh, text is corresponding with the color of the moon. I just love it. It's not completely silver, so like everything makes sense here inside. Okay, the last touches is adding some color to the tin. You can see this is not black anymore. I just waxed it. I was looking for the color that I really am going to like. And first of all, all the denim is perfect choice. This is one of the new waxes. And this, is, has, this really has this beautiful shade of blue. And I'm just going to rub it on the top of my tin with my fingers and wax is dry permanent in more or less five to 10 minutes, depending on the weather. So they're like furniture waxes. You can just let them dry and they will be water resistant. So you can even wash your tin with the wet baby wipe or cloth if you like, and it's going to be absolutely safe for touching. I'm going to add the highlights with silver on the top to match the color of the moon. You can do it with your fingers, you can do it with the brush, 
of course the brushes are probably easier to use but um, I forgot <laughs> Okay, and then once it is covered, you can also play a little bit inside. Oh, here I have to be more careful. I have to finish that with glitter a little bit. Because I moved the micro bits. Okay. So there should be enough of the blue. Glitter. Glitter is the solution here. Perfect. Now, last touch. Tiny bit of the silver one again, so you can see how dirty my fingers are. Probably whatever I'm going to touch is going to get uh, silver or blue. All the denim is a really nice deep color. This is something that um, I was really looking for in the color palette because we had metallic colors but we didn't really have the um, colorful metallic. So the new release is uh, showing you the new colors, some of them are very vibrant. And I just make sure I will touch the detail again. Because I didn't want to cover that with glitter just by, you know, uh oh, to go back, you go back here. Thank you. Right, perfect. So that is it. Right? We can compare. If you would like to add something more to it, you can add a little bit of paint splatters, like I did, the, just to create the effect of the, you know, the shiny, starry night. You can play with different colors of glitter. It is just absolutely fun to make, but because I told you I made a lid as well, I just want you to say, what is the difference here? It's not really that much different. If you look at the set of techniques, we've got the same idea with creating the background. This here, instead of just sticking the cheesecloth, I was just tapping the gel on the top to create the texture. And I was gluing some pieces of tape like that, right? Then I was gluing the elements. I had some fabric tape under the moon and, you know, played with that, created the whole composition. I added the same stars we used. I used the full face of the moon this time, and I used different shape of the pebbles. This is the diamond cut, so they are having a little bit of the texture on the top. I hope you can see it. The main difference is, after painting and after adding the wax, I didn't really do any of the glitters, sakins, or uh, the microbeads. For this reason, I can easily touch and I can even send it to somebody as a gift. And this is not going to be damaged. So it's going to be very easy to open the tin and this magical, um, a little bit more fragile composition is going to be protected. And this one, still very beautiful, is going to be perfect lid to hide our uh, tiny treasure. So. What uh, I suggest, if you really want to make a set, try to make uh, choices of the elements for the top to make it durable, to make it easy for people to touch so people can easily open and close. They can uh, be uh, sure that they won't damage the composition by accident because they, you know, here with all the glitters, everything, it's not really perfect thing to touch so much. It's going to stick, but you know, sooner or later, something may come off. This one is super safe. We just uh, skipped the step with the glittery ingredients and the effect and the result is still very beautiful. 
and there is texture, there are colors, it's shiny, it's metallic, it's, uh, it's just great. I wanted to uh, tell you that the idea for this <laughs> project came to me uh, when I was thinking about one of my friends. Uh, when I still lived in Poland, we had this kind of often, uh, we had this artistic meetings and one of my friends, her name is Agnieszka Anna, she made the most beautiful, tiny matchbox filled with a little quote and three burned matches inside. And it was just the most beautiful little assemblage you can imagine. And this gave me the idea that I would like to make this uplifting message for somebody, maybe even for myself, uh, and hide it in something that would be maybe not so, um, uh, <laughs> not so um, popular as an art object. And I think creating projects this way, you know, playing with different uh, techniques and just changing the everyday objects into art is one of the most exciting things that may happen. So if you feel this was something for you, please make sure you're going to show us your projects. Uh, if you'd like to make it more dynamic, like I'm doing now, I just feel like, ah, I would like some splatters. I'm just watering down my paint and I want to splatter some of the color on the moon like I did before. Of course, it's going to add a tiny bit of extra details. I'm very, very excited to see your projects you make after the, after the show. And if you have any questions, please don't be afraid to ask. I will try to answer um, later in the comments. Good news is we've got one more show scheduled for next week. I don't know what we are going to uh, do yet. I have to quickly make my decisions. But if you like the shows, we're going to see each other in a few days. I would like to say a huge thank you for seeing us all and thank you Kasia for joining and helping. I hope you feel inspired to make some uh, hidden art as one of you said art to go maybe or hidden art and don't be afraid to transform everyday objects. They are just as good as any other substrate to work on. Then this may be any composition you can imagine. You've got space. You can use lids, jars, whatever you would like to transform. It's just to have the, to have the idea. What is the message? What kind of treasure you would like to hide? And these techniques are very easy to um, apply to so many different projects that I hope you had the idea uh, to uh, get something done. This is us. Thank you so much for joining. You can see the mess on the table now. It was so great to see you all and thank you, thank you for all the lovely comments. If you have any questions, please let us know. Don't forget to visit Art Daily Cafe. This is the place which is giving you um, inspiration every day. In, it's both on Facebook and our group called uh, Art Daily Cafe. And it's on Instagram as well. We try to post art journaling, but general art inspiration. And our new green emerald mood board is starting now. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much. And uh, if, you, um, if you would like to see more of the inspiring tutorials, please visit our website, finevar.com, where my super talented design team members are showing you uh, their beautiful creations step by step, twice a week, every Monday and every Friday. And visit the website of uh, Prima Marketing. They've got amazing blog with a lot of paper craft and mixed media projects. You can learn so much just by watching. And I'm sure you will be inspired. Thank you for joining me. This was Finavara with Prima Marketing. And, you know, have a great night or day. I know some of you are in New Zealand and it's morning on Saturday. <laughs> Bye.